Welcome back to Beards and Brews. This week's review is going to be Twister from 1996. Now, from the creators of Jurassic Park and the director of Speed. Was it really? Yeah. Are you just making I... that shit up? No, it's actually on the poster. I mean, I feel like Twister did for storm chasing what Jurassic Park did for paleontology or what Speed did for public transportation employees, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, but was the driver really the star of that or involved excitingly in any way other than keeping the bus above 50 and looking forward? Yo, I just I... thought that movie was about meth. <laughs> oh, no. But what did I think, sir? I thought that this movie starred some incredible talent like Helen Hunt's forehead and Bill Paxton's teeth. You and need oh Helen boy. Hunt out of this. She is a national treasure. Well, not to mention good old Reba McIntyre as Bill's, I guess, side love interest. Yes. His I, wife? Shrug? Whoa, like, that is not a side love interest. That is the main love interest. He is going mm. to marry her. But, I mean, that's that's just his Midwestern rebound. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, uh, the conveyance of emotion in this film is horrid. He's, <laughs> baby, I love you. Go ride with the weird molesty guy in the back while I ride no. with my ex-wife. I, I don't like how you're talking to my boy Dusty here. <laughs> He's just like, <laughs> No, Dusty would be fucking hilarious to hang out with. I could be best friends with Dusty. No, because so Dusty isn't real. Dusty is just Philip Seymour Hoffman pretending to be Jack Black. I could be best oh. friends with Philip Seymour Hoffman pretending to be Jack Black. I could. I, this is like could. free Jack Black, Jack Black, so he was on top of the game. He knew. Yeah, <laughs> just stomp around on stage, trying to plug Tenacious D. Something about cockles, I don't know. <laughs> so this movie, the opening scene of this, starts out in 1969. Nice! nice. Yep, that's where we are. Um, we see um, a little girl in bed, and there's a storm a-brewing. Alright, just real fast, this storm, it's like the storm of the century, that's the, you know, the theme of the movie, every so often this ridiculous storm terrorizes the Midwest, and you know, tears people away from their families, sad, whatever. Physically uh, tears them away from their families. And, like, this, the father figure, who we find out is later on a young Helen Hunt, um... <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Helen Hunt? No, oh, 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 oh. no, that, that guy is not Helen Hunt, okay? <laughs> Spoiler alert. Anyways, he's just, like, standing there sipping coffee as he's watching the television... And they're warning him there's a huge tornado on his way. And he's like, huh. Cheddar Goblin. <laughs> oh, yes. No, this fucking family just reminded me of, like, Honey Boo Boo and her tribe. Like, of just miscreants. You know, you got the big fat Mama June. You got the Huggy Bear reject dad. They all run out to avoid this fucking storm. And they get in this fucking cellar. And the, the dad who looks like he get it on a on a good day weigh 120 pounds soaking wet and then you got the 400 pound mama jean character and he's over there trying to hold the door like whole door and my son looks at me and goes why doesn't the big lady do it <laughs> why by the way the th through the whole lady. first scene of that they're forgetting the dog fuck they're leaving toby behind no 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 he makes an extra second of whatever opens the doors and he jumps yeah. right in but they yes, don't it. make any effort to, to try and save the dogs. That's all on Toby. They're they're waiting for him to get scooped up. Eh, that's okay. Toby's not his real name. They... Oh, no. <laughs> but uh, they, they come back to this whole idea of save the dog two more times. Like, whenever they have to rescue the aunt, they gotta get the dog. And then whenever it shows the family at the end with the, you know, the mega, ultra mega chicken... It's <laughs> tornado through. No, it's the ultra mega tornado, but it's like tearing things up. And then the guy comes out of the fucking storm cellar after it's all dead and over with. And like Billy Ray Cyrus is playing. And there's an American flag blowing. And he comes out with his two kids and his dog. Just like get the fuck I'm out of here with dogs. The American. Where my space fire tire barn oh. is blowed up. Yeah. <laughs> well, look at that. Didn't touch the house. <laughs> Bill, Bill Paxton. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you one thing. They're not getting the television. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, man. So, this 
one of the most epic tornadoes of all time tears through their house. It's bearing down in this tiny shelter. And mentioned earlier, this guy weighs nothing. He's trying to hold the door to the foundation with his little stupid latch. He's just screaming up a storm. He's like, I got it. Ah! And he just gets torn away with the door. Sucked like, away into the tornado. Like, he's trying to hold the door closed. I don't know why he doesn't, like, just bunker in the shelter with everybody else. They ended up fine. Well, I mean, she was 400 pounds and the little kid was caught in her orbit. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> She's not wrong. But what about the dog? <laughs> the dog survived just fu- Just fucking, it's a storm cellar. Just stay there. You don't need to, like, hold onto the door. The door is probably not going to last. Uh, you know, I think it was proven that uh, if you hold a door, then you're going to go out the hero. So this dude just assumed that's, you know, how you got to do it. The Furion Raven didn't even get involved in this, though. That's, I a, understand that's a Game of Thrones reference for all of you out there. Hell, I, I haven't even seen the show, and I get it. Pop culture, fell. Yeah. I'm still mad uh, at you for having not watched Game of Thrones. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, so the dad fucking grabs a hold of the, the door, and you never see him again. He's literally never seen again. He went to buy cigarettes and is just gone. Yeah, uh, dad gets a little winded, and it cuts to the present day. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. 27 and a half years later... Oh, man, it's just like, are these tornadoes like fucking it? Like Pennywise? He just comes back every 27 years just to wreak havoc on this poor town? Just to oh, suck shit. some kid family. Ew! <laughs> You'll float, too! You'll float, too! But they don't float. They get sucked up into the sky and they propelled. They float through. in the air. Yeah. Fair enough. A group of meteorologists, I guess, weatherologists in the lab or whatever, and we just get a hint, some foreshadowing. They say... Oh, if these cells keep building, there could be a record number of tornadoes. Oh. Can I briefly point out that every time that uh, lady meteorologist comes over to, like, a computer to say something, she just has, like, a mouthful of grilled cheese. <laughs> okay. That's always something that Munch is like, yeah, yeah, that looks like it's going to suck. And just cuts to whatever else. <laughs> yeah, and these just... meteorologists up in the lab or wherever they are, like, looking at computers, they are not characters in the film whatsoever. They're just... An idea. So they yeah. look down at these monitors, and all I thought, because there's like blue swirling on it, and you're like, wait a minute, are they watching like the fucking Spice Channel? Nah. <laughs> Number 56, I know what you mean. Had to catch it when it was just the right shade of blue. <laughs> <laughs> Hard cut from that, good old Billy Boy Paxton hanging out with his new, I don't know, Oklahoma side chick. And they're on the way to see, uh, Good old Dr. Harding, who's Helen Hunt, with his like little band of tornado hunters. And uh, they're trying to get divorced, but this whole time she's playing hard to leave. Divorce? Yeah, this is Bill, who was played by Bill. All right, I know that's hard to follow. It's Bill, Bill. All I right, mean, that's... we've got Helen Hunt, whose character is Joe, which is a boy's name, but we're going to call her Joe. I was going to now... say, maybe, maybe Joe's short for Josephina. Oh... Nice. And then the side chick is Melissa, who isn't even the side chick, by the way. She is the fiance. That's what we got here. His finance. <laughs> now, is there any explanation to why all these guys had like a wacky racer mobile? Each one had their own unique, weird storm chasing vehicle, like the fucking Twister van. And then you had like the Bill Paxton mobile. Everyone had like their own little take on their vehicle. I mean, that's what you have to do to characters who have zero personality. I don't know. Maybe it's like, uh, you know, you're creating like a League of Legends team. You, everybody's going to have their own little utility. You know, I you can't so. just go out with a whole group full of uh, full of uh, spellcasters or anything. You need your mage. You need your... I don't know. Yeah, because you got like... Uh, you got the Cameron from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And yep. his little fucking, I don't know, fuck buddy. And they're just, they're the navigators, so they have that little, like, home thing in the back of the truck. I forgot those things, little mobile things. Well, last week we had Ed Rooney, so it only seems fitting that now we have Cameron. Maybe next week we'll have, no, we're never doing a fucking, God, what's the main character? Uh, Matthew Broderick? Yeah, no, we're never doing a uh, Matthew Broderick film, probably. I would do the producers. That's a good one. Mm. Mm, I would do the original. Oh, yeah, 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 that is right. The original's way fucking or, better. 
Just as something to shit all over, we could do Godzilla. No. 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 Hard no. That's all a, right. That's a painful slog. That might have to be a live one, so we can all just get fucking trashed and just poop all over Roland Emmerich. Fair enough. Well, we roll up know, on Helen. Oh, sorry. You know, I thought we were still discussing that, but I, you know, people thought that was going to be big, and it just bombed. It's a lot of fish. <laughs> but yeah, so, you got all these like, uh, you got all these guys. That have, like, <laughs> I'm trying. So, like each person has like a their own like little car, or whatever. The guy that looks like fucking uh, a child molester mixed with Joey Fatone. He's got like the twister van painted on the side. You got the guy that looks like a professor. He's got like a station wagon that blares classical music all the time. All that stuff. Man, yeah, see, you guys are paying attention to the vehicles. I'm paying attention to what they're listening to. Because when you roll up on Helen Hunt, she's blasting some Tory AMS. That tells me a lot about her personality. But when you go over to Philip Seymour Hoffman, uh, Dusty's character, or Dusty, Philip Seymour Hoffman's character. Eric Clapton. Yeah, he's into some Eric Clapton. Fuck yeah, man. He's got some good tunes. Like, later on, he starts blasting some Deep Purple. Absolutely. I got that in my notes. Yeah. I feel like the biggest driving force of this movie isn't all the special effects, but the music. It does work, and it works pretty hard. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of good tunes in this uh, movie, I'll tell you that. And I wrote them all down. Or at least some of them. I wrote some of them down. See, while we're on the subject of the soundtrack, I gotta completely disagree. Uh, I felt that the music just, each time it would come on, there'd be like this song that was supposed to make me feel something. I went, man, I like that song, but why is this happening to it? I just never got that connection. And then, you know, with uh, the orchestral swells, they're okay. I like those, like to set the mood for when the tornado's coming. But near the end of the film, it starts doing like that angelic chorus nonsense to, I guess, explain some things, why it's happening. I don't fucking know, but it was awful. I'll tell you, I didn't give a shit about any uh, orchestraic stuff, but there were some bangers in here. <laughs> Soundtrack? Full of some bangers. I'm into it. Don't care if it, you know, correlated to what was going on in the movie. I'm into it. I mean, if you looked at the musical credits, especially like the original soundtrack, Eddie Van Halen fucked a tornado. That's what the soundtrack is. <laughs> oh boy, fuck the tornado. But for real though, Van Halen did the soundtrack to this movie. <laughs> I just couldn't get into it. I had a hard time with it. Maybe it was because it was Van Hagar. Oh, well, these well, cars they definitely couldn't drive 55. Maybe it's that thing that um, Matt Stone from South Park said. It's like, man, everybody loves Van Halen, but as soon as David Lee Roth leaves, fuck that band. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so can we discuss something in this film, which I really, uh, I really want to get out there. So Helen Hunt, she's always been like pretty-ish. Like, you look at it and you go, oh, she's pretty. They had to cast somebody as Bill Paxton's wife who made you feel that Helen Hunt was smoking hot. And they did that, and it's amazing. Okay, I will tell you, in this film, in this film, Helen Hunt is smoking hot. I feel like that's the comparison effect. They never use another female character in this film who isn't like a female child or an older fat lady. Because they never want you to see anyone that looks better than Helen Hunt because she is the sex symbol. I mean, yeah, that's, even that, that's filmmaking for you. Even that the woman that's on the team besides her, she's like a... She's yeah. a lesbian. <laughs> I mean, probably, right? I mean, whatever's down her tornado alley. She might just be like asexual. We don't know anything about her preferences. Asexual what? Uh, a... A... Uh, are you are you fucking with me (laughs) i'm fucking with you man oh okay from the get-go there's just like immediate sexual tension or some kind of tension between the two like you know 10 minutes into this movie it's going to end with those two together yeah i mean this entire time he's trying to play off this thing like well we're getting married sign the papers let's get it done yada yada there's in no way any kind of connection or whatsoever, like, you can tell that the only reason why he brought her along is out of 100% spite. Yes, he's trying to be like, hey, look, I got another lady, and you're over here pining, wishing you still had me. Maybe all along, the plan was for him to bring this chick and be like, 
she won't sign the papers, baby. Come with me. Because she won't sign the papers, but she also wasn't trying to get, get him back. But now that he brought her into the picture, she's like, oh, you getting married? I miss you. Mwah. Yeah, honestly, yeah. Melissa kind of got off the hook pretty easy. I was... mean, I feel like Bill was like, one of these are going to enter the suck zone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's something kind of recurring. You have Dusty talking to Melissa about the, quote, suck zone. <laughs> And we all know what that means, but in the context of tornadoes, that means something else. And <laughs> Jack Black is very pervy in this. He's just all over this woman, like, in my suck zone. And he's just got it, it's like, right up on her ear. <laughs> it, it made me think of uh, the cable guy with that little lisp. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's just very enthusiastic about tornadoes. I mean, yeah, like, he's a fun character. Like, every time he's on screen, I'm just like... This guy's a lot of fun. Yeah, he commits to that character, though. He fucking goes all in, over the top, even whenever they're, you know, there's a scene later on with the rescue the honor or whatever. And fuck, is he like, we gotta get the dog! <laughs> First one running up the side of the building, over the top. Over <laughs> the top. Whoa, arm wrestling. <laughs> Not doing that movie. Nope. But anyhow. Uh, so yeah, there's like this whole thing where like Bill's back, but he's not back, you know. He keeps right. saying he's not back. But clearly he is present, so. Did John Wick steal that from this? Are you back? No, I'm not back. Are you back? No, I'm not back. He fucking F5 Twister sits down, I'm back. Uh, he like karate chops the tornado. Or three guns it. <laughs> yeah, just pew pew pew. But yeah, we find out Bill is back. He's not back, but he's he's in the area. He got a new job as a weatherman, not like a scientific meteorologist or anything, but he's going to be like a fucking television weatherman. Looking and, forward to your weather reports. Yeah, everybody's just kind of poking fun at him for that, but, you know, whatever. Um, Joe has to introduce Bill to Dorothy. Her side, bitch. Which is, uh, uh, they've got four of these Dorothy contraptions. It's like a, I don't... I don't know what you would... Some kind of a... It's a garbage can full of fucking tin cans. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's basically like a Pepsi recycling bin by the end of the movie. 100%. They're like full of those little sort Sensors. of balls that you would put a, a quarter into a machine and twist the little thing and it would come out and you get a ball full of, like, I don't know, you'd get a prize in there. It's like a yep. thing full of those. I wrote down meteorological Christmas ornaments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Silver Christmas balls. Yeah, and there are four Dorothys, so they have four chances to get this thing sucked up into a tornado. And the whole shtick is so they can get enough info and feedback from the experiment that they can better get the word out that a tornado is inbound and save a lot of lives. Like, so yeah, this is supposed to uh, sort of be able to predict where tornadoes are forming better. Yeah, and I have written down four of them. So there's Dorothy, Dorothy Harder, Door 3, and Fourthy. <laughs> like forty. Now, there's a bit while they're explaining all this, and you know, they they keep trying to mount this sexual tension through this entire movie, but it, it never feels like sexual tension. I grew up watching a show called Clarissa Explains It All, and it just reminded me of whenever Sam and Clarissa would be having an argument. Ooh, you're not coming into my room with a ladder, but I'll be up there, Clarissa. And then it's like, nah, 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 I'm nah. I'm nah, getting nah, the nah. alligator on you. Yeah, that's, this is how this felt the whole movie. Even when they finally kissed at the end, I was like, who gives a shit? whoop de fuck <laughs> now, there, was, there was, you know, a little bit of, little bit of accidental boob touching at one point. But that was not accidental. He fucking straight grabbed that tit. <laughs> I was giving him the benefit of the doubt. That's in my the notes. Car ride. Oh, I was agreeing. Like, you know, that wasn't accidental. Yeah. If we all saw it, there's no fucking way it could be like, oh, that's an accident. It was just, oh, titty grab. And then he does it again at the fucking end. The guy uh, seemed like he had some anger issues, and we all knew it was going to end up him taking it out on her. Yeah, just eight, one tit squeeze at a time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bill no. Second it, base. It, could, it just goes from Twister to Titty Twister. I have that in my notes. Titty Twister, the unofficial sequel, just <laughs> Dust Till Dawn. Hard time. All right, so everybody, it is go time. There is action going on. There's a tornado forming fucking somewhere. Yeah, everybody drops what they're doing. 
<laughs> There's a tornado forming fucking somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it, and they gotta go get it. That's what they do. They're tornado chasers. Bill wants to go with them, uh, and Melissa's like, "All right, I guess I'll go to." Did she sign the papers? And Bill's just like, "Ah, shit." She didn't. Here, give me the papers. I'll go ride with her. You ride with Philip pre- Pervert Her Hoffman. I don't Herbert think he's Hoffman. a pervert. I think he's, re- <laughs> like I said, he's just really passionate about tornadoes. Dude, I mean, passion isn't like getting in someone's ears and being like, I'm going to fucking grape you. <laughs> it's like, this is the first sign you see everybody just getting off on this whole thing because they're like, fuck yeah, tornadoes. Woo! That's no moon. Just like, everybody's just like, <laughs> Everyone's like off the handles excited about it. It's like, God damn, is this like their fucking drug? Yeah, and they're like cracking open non mountain dews and just like, fucking gnarly, bro. It's so over the top. And then you get like the corporate America bad guys led by the Princess Bride. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you the, mean uh... when the Empire goes up? Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> yeah, he All just right. walks up like, ah. You guys, let me tell you about Jonas. Jonas is supposed to be like the, uh, he's not the antagonist because the tornadoes are really the antagonist in this film, but he's supposed to be like the personified antagonist. Like but a rival? I'll, I'll tell Tornado you, incarnate. but through the whole fucking movie, he is nothing but just professional. They are the ones antagonizing him. Yeah, but he's an asshole. He's not. He's older he's not, idea. Though. Fucking, and then tries to chase them everywhere they go. He's such a prick. He's like, hmm, uh, Bill Paxton's back in town. Let me figure out where he's going. Let me try no, to get no, some no. Like, so-and-so. He knows someone else is more experienced than him. So he's just like, you know what? I'm going to let you take the lead. I'll follow you. How about that? It's all in the name of science. He is not antagonizing them at all. He's not antagonizing yeah, looking forward to your weather reports, cocksucker. I mean, I mean if, yeah. if Philip Seymour Hoffman said that, it would just be funny. Yeah. And it was funny. Like, <laughs> I, I got nothing against that little dig. You didn't see the extended cut that I saw. There's a scene in the bathroom where they're both standing there, and Princess <laughs> Bud turns at the urinal and pisses on his shoe. And his cock is huge. Bill Paxton can't compete with that. <laughs> oh, Whoa. no. Which extended cut is this? It's one that apparently. <laughs> it's my fanfic. Don't worry about it. Right. <laughs> head, head cannon twister con. <laughs> anyway, so everybody's rolling. They take a pit stop at the uh, this little what is it like a barbecue joint or something? A little diner yeah, where everybody like gets like, yeah coffeeed up and you know they get a sandwich to go or whatever. And the reason and, why they stop there is because in their like little bit of a. Hustle to get to the next tornado. Bill Paxton runs over some bullshit, flattens a tire, and that's why they're there. Well, he actually gets ran off the road by the corporate fucks who apparently don't antagonize anybody. Yeah, it's like, oh no, incoming a Dodge commercial. That is a Jeep. Big old Jeep symbol on the back. No, those are all all Dodges. Yeah, those black cars are all Dodges. Just like they drive a Dodge Ram, the red one. It's a huge commercial. That's what this movie is. Yeah, that's why I was thinking, because, like, once he blows out the tire, they have to take old girl's Jeep. And it just zooms in on the back fucking panel where it's, like, Jeep. Real huge. And does anybody notice how, like, okay, he busted a tire, so, you know, you can fix a tire locally. You don't have to take it anywhere, but the mechanic takes the tire that Bill takes out of the truck and just wheels it away. Like, what are you going to do with that, man? I'll take it in here, and I'll look at it, and I'll get a match for it, and I'll bring them both out, and then I'll put one on, and I'll put the other one back up. I'll just uh, spit on it. That'll work. Just give it a little spit shine. Rolls it in, rolls it back. Yep, looks tired to me. (laughs) It's got a thermometer in it. It's tired, don't look too good. It's got flavor. But, uh... Inside the diner there, we we see uh, Joe and Jonas kind of interact together, and they do seem like they have kind of a decent relationship, you know? They're talking about, you know, seeing which direction the Twister's going to go, which direction Bill wants to go, you know, you get a little Shania Twain over the intercom. They're acting like professionals, which is fine and everything, but there's this little bit of disconnect where, like, they're clearly on opposite teams, and there's, like, no point to have this little camaraderie at the moment. 
science. Science is the reason to have that camaraderie because regardless of who gets the information, oh. that means that the uh, that kind of science, that kind of technology is being developed so that people can have that early warning system. But they Joe wants that to happen, even if it's Jonas that's developing it. They want grant money. They said yeah. it. Because as soon as it fucking goes over at the end, that's the first thing that comes out of her mouth. She's like, look, I gotta get this grant money, and we gotta start running the lab, and start getting some funding. She couldn't let the dude from corporate America get it, because he's already getting funded. She's the underdog. She needed to catch... But I'm going to disagree with all your science hubbub because you don't fucking need it when Bill Paxton out there sniffing out tornadoes. That's all he fucking does. He looks at the sky, has a concerned face. He's like, we need to go. Yeah, it's like he's, he's got a fucking just, divining rod in his pants for, for tornadoes or something. Bro, what's <laughs> going on? My left nut's really acting up. Yeah, he gets <laughs> out there and like licks the sand or whatever and he's like, it's going north, northeast. We got to yeah. run. He still out there sniffing dirt, and Philip Seymour Hoffman was just like, fucking extreme. Did you guys, like, I wish I would have remembered to do it. I wanted to write down how many times they said directions. Holy hell, if you made that into a drinking game, you'd be hammered. Wait, are you not hammered? No, I'm just saying, like, they, north, northwest, south, by southeast, west, west, north, south, east, 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 west, north, south. Just through the whole fucking movie, they're calling out directions. There's so much, this is Tornado Awareness, the movie. Yeah, I give it that. All right, it's action. It's go time again. Bill's moving out. Fucking tornado. Fucking deep purple's going on. So, like, this is when the movie picks up and just never lets go. Because it's just action nonstop from here on out. There's like a small break and a drive-in later on. But other than that, goddamn yeet. It's just tornado time. The season has started, and they're chasing away. Now, this tornado they start chasing, he's driving all slow, and then Helen Hunt's like, man, you're being a little bitch, and did you lose your edge? He's like, nuh-uh. Not before just, like, yanking on her seatbelt and strapping her in. And takes a sharp turn into this clearly cut off-road path. <laughs> just, <laughs> here we go. Right there, we get our, our first tornado of the movie. And man, okay, it's not the best, but it still looks fucking good. I agree, 100%. It doesn't look too dated. I'll tell you, I have no qualms with any of the special effects in this movie. For 1996, solid. Yeah, I know a little bit about how they made this, and there there were no 3D models back then. Like, all that was particles, so each, like, individual cloud was hand-placed, modeled, and animated. It's fucking nuts. Even that barn that gets exploded by the tornado in a couple minutes, that barn was not a whole barn. It was all individual pieces modeled to just look like a whole barn, just so they can explode themselves later. That's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have any problems with the special effects in this film until, like, literally the very end, whenever the uh, storm chaser bad guy SUV, that oh. looks like little explosion from like the cut scene from twisted metal 2 it looked bad yeah it doesn't it doesn't touch the ground so it's like <laughs> just <laughs> you guys can we stop referring to the dread pirate roberts as the bad guy because he <laughs> is just doing his job all right so saul's on his way to the tornado all right well he played robin hood too so he's a man in tights tight tights yeah, they're barreling down this like crazy like little alleyway trying to get out of it. Yeah, it's like whatever. a little makeshift irrigation creek. Yeah, and the tornado's just barreling down on them like it's right next to them. There's this little, uh, I don't know, this little dock or whatever blocking their way. They smash into it because they can't stop. Bill Paxton's like, hey, we need to take shelter. Helen Hunt's just like, hey, we need to get shit going, even though the tornado's like literally nipping at their bud. Yeah, and fuck, this is like such a crazy scene because they get stuck in a literal rut and he's like oh all we gotta do is open the thing up and all the little majiggy jags will fly out and she's like ah we can still do it and she falls over and she's got mud all over her butt and her jeans are really tight and i was like you know all right helen hunt (laughs) might look like he took a doo-doo just now but you know look i'm i mean i've been mud some of us are into that (laughs) oh no so that tornado is like coming down on them and it's like pulling the truck back and pushing the truck forward, ripping the planks out above their heads, and they're just chilling underneath of it, like <laughs> zero concern. Like now nah, we're on, we're we're fine. 
That's because Bill Paxton is amazingly strong, and also that's to power his teeth. He's a surgeon fella. The... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thought it was going to be like the opening of fucking Superman whenever Kevin Costner was just like, No, don't, Clark. you got to let it suck me up so I can be out of this fucking movie. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, I gotta go, son. But being it, I love you. Okay, bye. <laughs> just let me die, you freak from space. <laughs> Space freak. No. So this tornado passes through them. Uh, they get back, I guess, on the road with the rest of the crew. They meet up with them. And uh, and Jonas, his crew, passes by. And, you know, maybe I'm just a Jonas sympathizer, but he's not doing anything wrong here. He's driving through. If there was something wrong, something going on, they needed medical attention, someone would have waved them down or something like that. But they try and call him out for not stopping. Meanwhile, you've got Dusty, who's just like jumping in his car window, like calling him a little bitch or whatever. He just wanted a kid. Antagonizing him. He did What's want wrong? a kid. He's, he's just like... What's wrong with he's, that? He's antagonizing him, and Jonas is only being the professional in the situation. But still, it would have been nice for him to be like, Hey man, you know, what's going on? You guys alright? Then leave, you know, that kind of thing, well, like a friendly gesture. Now, if there was anything wrong, then you wouldn't have Philip Seymour Hoffman jumping in the window, just being a Looney Tune. They obviously have their shit flipped turned upside down, so there's, you know, it's not 100% okay over here. Yeah. But I feel like driving through that, you can kind of see what's going on. Yeah, the truck got fucked up, but everybody's okay. Nobody's dead. Nobody's in need of medical attention or anything like that. All right, let's press on. Uh, no. They deliver a line here that would have been better delivered by Arnold Schwarzenegger. The guy's like, oh my god, the twister went right over you guys and it didn't kill you. What was it like? And oh, just yeah. that delivery, it was windy. You know, yeah. <laughs> it, it was windy. You know, that's like, that's quality. That was intense. Ooh. Now, in the next bit, whenever they're all moving on because the next fucking twister's coming or whatever... Did anyone else go, you know, there's a, they're out in the middle of fucking nowhere. Nowhere near a cell tower. It's stormy, and it's 1996, and this bitch gets better service on her 1996 cell phone than we get nowadays. I mean, that's just the power of sex therapy. Yeah, people gotta call her, my dick is not adequate. <clears throat> this is actually, like, honestly, the only line that I remember from this movie, having seen it, like, uh, I don't know, let's say 20 years ago. Have not seen it since, but I do remember the, she didn't marry your penis. Yeah. Okay, she didn't only marry your penis. Thanks, Reba. Yeah. <laughs> Here's more chance penis don't let me down. By the way, I do want to give her props for being the oh, only motherfucker geez. in this film, the only person in this film in fucking rural Oklahoma to even attempt an accent. She brings out the accent and shows that no one else has it. So she points it out. If everyone just sounded normal, then no one would have felt odd about her having such a fucking weird accent. So you're going to blame the girl for trying? Hell yeah. You can't blame the girl for trying. She's doing her job. And I, you know. Don't bring me down. Yellow. Yeah, they immediately jump in the trucks, go zooming down the road, chasing another twister that turns into a double water twister that turns into a triple squirter sister, and it flanks them. Wow, extreme. I do love those triple squirter sisters. I ooh. Um, so, anyways, <laughs> well, just before that, like they they're following like this big old like F two or F three or whatever, and we get like another little window into like how the fuck Bill Paxton operates, which it's never explained, but he does it. And he just takes a good long look at it. He's like, "Huh, that's a, that's a sidewinder." But yeah. God, just by <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna crack back across the field, and you see Jonas just driving up ahead, and they're like, "Turn right, to make a hard right. It's gonna crack back." You know, I... Are you sure? Rabbit is smart. Rabbit is wise. Shut the fuck up, Cameron. <laughs> they just needed him to spout directions and he was like hold on let me get some character development in here no one gives a fuck Cameron I like oh. him <laughs> I was gonna say Brady's just like tearing him apart and Jen's like I like him but yeah, hey, my favorite characters in the whole in this whole movie are like anyone other than the three main characters see I gotta disagree I think Helen Hunt knocks it out of the park uh, she is putting on a hell of a performance I love Bill Paxton he is phoning it in 
It's so fucking bad. I will say, Bill Paxton can just get the fuck out of here. Helen Hunt is hot. She can stay. Melissa, she can go. <laughs> Everybody else is fine. Give me Cameron. Give me Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah. Give me the fucking aunt. She can make me some steak and egg. Because I'm all this about it. Such a more interesting movie had it just been about Helen Hunt's character and her band of misfits chasing fucking tornadoes. Bill Paxton and the forced love triangle thing. Unnecessary. I mean, like, e Bill Paxton, even at its worst, is still pretty good, so I enjoy it. I just like I, Bill Paxton. It's just cool to see him. Like, I know he's not around anymore, so, like, seeing him in this movie is just like a tree. I'm like, oh, yeah, Bill Paxton, you're still pretty Wait, good. Wait, is he not uh, like, Did he die? Is he dead? Is he still alive? Unfortunately, yeah, he passed. Yeah, oh, he passed damn. away in 2017, something like that. Oh, man. Sorry, Bill Paxton. I, I'll stop shit. I mean, be honest. I love Bill Paxton. I love him in, you know, about three, four movies that I can think of. But... In this, I just don't think the performance is there. Do I laugh when he's on screen? Yes, but is he playing the serious role he's meant to be? Hell no. I mean, this whole thing is like an uh, action disaster movie, so it's not meant to be taken straight, anyway. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna give him a pass. He's having fun, hanging out with Helen Hunt, whatever. He's the extreme. I mean, <laughs> the as extreme. an action slash disaster <laughs> movie, it's like crap. it's fine. It'd be like it's totally fine. He does his role just fine. I don't care about him, but he. He does the role. He got the nickname The Extreme, and never once does his character do anything extreme. They tell his extreme stories, but he never does anything like that. Even whenever he's like, oh, that's it. We had fucking steaks at Auntie Anne's house, but now I'm extreme again. He's still not extreme. He's just... He yells like once after that. Tornado. But there's some extreme shit later on and stuff, like they drive through an exploded tanker. They drive through a house. No, I mean, that's not like extreme because he wanted to do it he had to do it he didn't want to drive into the explosion he was stuck on a tree so things I mean, are only extreme if you want to do them i mean he didn't have to wander around naked and chuck a bottle of jack into a tornado he had to do it <laughs> no he wanted to do that he was like have a drink and the tornado did according to the tale and it never hit the ground extreme! he's the, he's the voluntarily <laughs> So back to the s sisters or whatever. <laughs> oh yeah, he's getting tag teamed by some sisters. Triple teamed. Yeah, the uh, the tornado like little core of the system or whatever turns into these water spouts. They're going around. They sound like they're slurping away. It's kind of weird. Like the sound design is like usually pretty on point, if not better, in this movie. But like the water tornadoes in this movie sound like super just fucking moist. It sounds like a Nesquik commercial. <laughs> Like this funny with twirling shock milk. That's what's yeah. going on. Ooh, this quick. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then what's her name? Her call gets interrupted when a cow flies by, and another cow flies by, and we're uh, nope, nope, that's the same cow. Yep, I, I can't talk right now. We've got cows. <laughs> the next thing I have is that there's a Goo Goo Dolls song playing. They want her aunt's red meat. They're like, we want meat. We want meat. So then they oh, got to yeah. go they're, to the house. They're right near uh, Waikita, which is a real town in Oklahoma, where uh, fucking Joe's Aunt Meg lives. And she is delightful. Now, did any of you else get confused? They're all sitting around, and they've all been talking about her for three minutes leading up to the scene. They're all like, yeah, yeah, we got to go there. All these people, yeah, we all know about your aunt. And then when they get there, they start asking her questions like they never met her before. Where'd you get all those beef? Did you see my cows out front? No. Well? <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of that is driven by Melissa, who's asking some of the questions. Yeah. And Melissa, this is the first time that Melissa has met Aunt Jo. Um, like, what, especially when they're talking about, like, the Fujita scale, the F3, F4. Yeah, Has anybody seen an F5? I like how they can't even talk about the F5. They're like, whoa, don't bring it up. <laughs> it's bad well, mojo. Well, like, I, I know how it can be kind of a, a bad, I don't know, might be just like a bad term, especially if Joe's around. The only F5 that she's ever experienced is the one that fucking sucked her dad up into the heavens. The suck zone. The suck zone, yep. I don't know. Like it, that would be like, oh, dude, there's fish out there. No, don't talk about my fish. One time, my dad, when I was an itty bitty 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 child, kind of almost choked on a fish fillet from Long John. 
Does your dad yeah. own a dealership? Because my dad owns a dealership. Why is it so specific? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, next up, we've got a Lisa Loeb song playing in the background. And I don't know if you guys know this. I fucking love Lisa Loeb. Well, we certainly do now. Because in yeah. that same scene, uh, for whatever reason, the auntie whatever, just like, hey, Joe, yeah, go steal your man back. Fuck that new lady. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, fuck that new lady. She is a frigid bitch. Hey, leave Reba alone, okay? She's trying. Even though she may look like fucking Jerry Seinfeld, she's trying. She is a completely decent looking lady. She's just... She's a stick in the mud. What do you do? I'm arm candy. Can you chase a NATO? I don't even know what a NATO is. Willy, 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 get out of here, bitch. Punt. Well, she, she's just constantly <laughs> freaked out by everything. <laughs> what was that, the Wild Stallions? <laughs> yes. Bill and Ted here. Kick this bitch to the curb. Get with the chick with the mud button. Fucking crazy phantasm balls in the tube out front. <laughs> so everybody eats. Everybody gets their grub on. Fucking Joe gets washed up. She doesn't have the mud on her anymore, which is, which is good, I guess. And uh, we got an F3. There's another tornado going. Woo! Back on the NATO hunt. Yep. And luckily, Meg packed some food for Dusty because, you know, that's what everybody was caring about. Hey, you know, he's... He's the chunky one. He gets the food. That's the joke. Yeah. Like, that's why we could be best friends. Like, hey, Dusty, you got some extra food for Meg? Hell yeah. It's like his little Jack Back snack pack. <laughs> like, let, let me get some of those Tatoes that, Me that Meg brought for you. Tatoes. Yeah. <laughs> I wish the next scene was them, like, you know, that little uh, montage of them driving and it just cuts to him. He's just, like, stuffing fucking baked potato in his mouth. <laughs> oh, or, like, leans his head out the window and is it F3? Like, Muscle Man from regular show and food just spraying out of his mouth. Yeah, he's <laughs> got his shirt off. Woo! But this is the big pump-up scene. We've got Van Halen going. Uh, this is Van Hagar, but it's, like, it's, it's some good Van Hagar. Uh, we got Bill accidentally touching a titty. You know, shit's going on. They drive through a cornfield. Then, help, here we go again. Jonas, buzzkill. They <laughs> almost run into him, and they're like, it's his fault whenever he was the one legally on the road driving. Like, I'm on your side on this one, Chandler. He wasn't doing nothing. They almost if, wrecked into him. Yep, if yep, you that's what I'm saying. If you notice, like, the moment they run into him, there's, like, a little, like, tornado siren sound just like because you know he's the bad guy yeah yeah like don't knock him just because he already got his funding he's he's trying to do the same thing that you are it's just he's already got the funds for it oh, i thought you were gonna say he's he's doing the same thing that you're trying but already did <laughs> by the way i don't think we mentioned that jonas actually has sort of his own version of dorothy it's called like the the dot or something like that it does the exact same thing it's just it looks more professional Oh, I yeah. was gonna say that was the complete value version. Yeah, and and Bill fucking hates it. Unrealized idea. Also, Jake Busey's on his team. Wait, teeth is he real? Versus teeth. Are that you fucking is? with me? No, not at all. You can wiki it right now. He doesn't get much screen time, but you can see him at that little um little diner or whatever and stuff. And a little bit later on, got to right. start I, gu I guess I believe you. Even if you're <laughs> just in Bill Paxton's uh, teeth stunt double. Oh. <laughs> So they're out there, they're doing their thing, they're uh, back on the road, and they almost get killed while setting up the next Dorothy. This scene is just so emotional. It's We're on so Dorothy 2 now, right? Yeah, Dorothy this two? is okay. Dorothy Harder. Yeah, and the thing spills over, and she's like, no, we gotta get each little ball, it's important. He's like, you just gotta leave it, it's a tornado. And <laughs> that's the word of the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. ah! And that's how I felt about some of the acting, though, because she's really committing to this, you know, emotional, heartfelt, holy shit, she has to do this. And the whole time, Bill Paxton, again, I'm not trying to shit on Bill Paxton. I like the man's work. He's trying to get her, and he's like, we gotta go. Let's go now. And you're like, man, come on. This lady is fucking really committing, and you're just like, embarrassed for her and still acting you know like, like if your kid was outside and doing power rangers and they're super into it and they're like you're the bad guy and you're like Rawr, i'm the bad guy <laughs> like he's trying to be like the harrison ford indiana jones like you know sort of service with a smile kind of thing she's trying to get that oscar yes it's two different Tornadoes. levels yeah why did it have to be tornadoes? <laughs> <laughs> That's no <laughs> moon. 
Like, in that same scene, even though Bill's not giving it his all, Helen Hunt's character, Joe, she is damn near close to driving both of them into that twister. Oh, sure. But you gotta commit, you know? Crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and the expectations <laughs> of their fucking children. Yeah, what you get here, um, I don't exactly remember what happened, but I remember just, like, the tornado dropping a power pole on the truck, and uh, it just knocking over Dorothy 2, and they spill everywhere, and fucking i don't know that's that's the end of dorothy 2 she tries to pick everything up but it's not working yeah dorothy 2 crashes on the ground pops like a balloon just sensors everywhere and it's a reoccurring thing this happens a few more times but it never shows you clean them up so somewhere out there near wicketa or whatever that place was called wakita wakita somewhere out there there's probably those props knocked to the side of the road like fuck it just leave it throw the whole be- way I mean, that'd be kind of like a cool little road trip idea. Yeah. We could probably sell those on eBay. I mean, they can't be like that many. Because I remember like later on, uh, when they're just like dumping boxes and boxes into them. Unboxing, it's already full. It's already like going all over the place. Yeah, he dumps in like one quarter of the box and they're already spilling out. That's whenever they've made them out of the fucking Pepsi cans for product placement. Get out of here, Pepsi. Oh, is that why the package is too light? They use diet? Damn, you know it. Locale. (laughs) <laughs> so yeah in the middle of this hubbub joe almost gets them both killed super emotional because the tornado that took her daddy is just still fresh in her mind every day and he, she just wants to just fucking i don't know like she doesn't have like a suicide mission or anything like no her goal is getting that technology built she says yeah. you've never seen it miss this house and miss that house and then come after yours bill <laughs> You're crazy. Bill's just like, man, this motherfucker's spitting. No. Oh. <laughs> Did you guys feel that this little bit was supposed to be so emotional and they've clearly still just, it's almost like their relationship never ended. So I was yeah. more curious why they split up to begin with. I did wonder that, honestly. Oh. I don't know why they ever split up. I know. Did so, you? yep. Like, actually, no, not just fucking with you, no. So anyways, right. back, in the, back when they're telling that story about how extreme Bill is or whatever... So when he was naked, he chucked that bottle to, up into the twister and never hit the ground. It's like, see, there was another Bill, an evil Bill, and I killed him. And they're like, yeah, woohoo! It's all just a euphemism for him being an alcoholic. Uh, well, you know who else is an alcoholic? I am. Uh, right now I've got, and don't judge me on this, I had a lot of good beer earlier, but right now I'm drinking... <laughs> I'm drinking Natural Light's Natterday. Um, it's a shandy. It's a strawberry lemonade shandy mixed with, uh, I guess, natural light, or at least something like it. It's 4.2% ABV. Tastes like strawberry lemonade and beer. It's honestly not bad. It'd be, like, perfect for, like, a, a sunny day just out, like, on the golf course or the disc golf course. Um, you know, just a good, like, everyday drinking beer or shandy, whatever you want to call it. It's whether you're, honestly whether you're- not bad. Whether you're chasing the dream or chasing them natos, that's the perfect drink for you. Natter yeah, day. Natter, like, natter, natter day. Natter day. Natter yeah. day. But um, for being from Natural Light, I swear it's really not bad. Um, but what I had earlier, a beer that I'd actually like to talk about from uh, the local Bad Shepherd Brewing Company. They have a Go Foam Yourself Mango Tangerine IPA that I had a couple of. Man, is that good. Uh, it's a 7 point, uh, I think it was 7.0 percent ABV, like very reserved hops for an IPA. Super mango forward, super citrus, a lot of orange juice notes. Also, just super really drinkable, something you could drink a lot of, even though it is 7 percent alcohol. Man, that's a good beer. I can you saved the worst one for the cast. Yeah, you roll with what you got. This next little scene, I, I was this is my favorite shot in the whole film coming up. Oh, the shining thing? Yeah, and it's got like the perfect, you know, right side focus on the shining, and then in the background, the lightning flashes with the F5 in it. Yeah, this movie's good looking. Yeah, I can't take anything away from it uh, graphically. They fucking, it still holds up. I watched it and went, you know, that still looks just fine. Now, this is directed by the guy who did the um, cinematography for Die Hard. Maybe that's why it has such like cool little visuals when you get them. A lot of top-down shots and a lot of I'm in a truck and you're looking at my face. <laughs> True. There's a lot of aerial shots too. 
Yeah, the top down, like drones before drone shots. Yeah, it's probably like a helicopter. Like nowadays, you can buy a drone for like a hundred bucks. You probably had to rent like a fucking twenty thousand dollar helicopter just to get a stupid angle. Think about that. That's nuts. Yeah, fifteen grand for a shot when you could just do it over and over and over with a fucking drone for hundred fifty bucks. The next thing we have is back up in the meteorological studio. We see like uh, two meteorologists, weather people, weatherologists say their two cells converged, and I'm just thinking like it's My the perfect system. storm. What? Oh, and George Clooney comes out. His skivvies in that boat. Oh, yeah. He's like, hold my hand, Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> but, yeah, we've got... Uh, we're at the movie theater. Uh, just like, uh, what, an outdoor drive-in movie theater? And they're watching The Shining. When they're watching this, the wind is blowing. And <clears throat> it's got that, like, county fair vibe to it. And I swear to God, I could feel that warm air. They did such yeah. a good job... Like, just visualizing that weather. It's amazing. It really makes me yeah. want, like, a chili dog and a snow cone. That's what I was going to say. Like, man, the air must just reek of corn dogs. You know it. It's just deep fried and sugar. <laughs> and then you yeah. get, to me, like, the best shot of the film. Uh, they're watching The Shining on the big screen. And so they kind of hard focus that into the right so you can still see it. But in the background, lightning is flashing and there's a big storm. Bill Paxton, Helen Hunter, uh, bottom left corner, just kind of standing there. And the lightning flashes again, and you see the big monstrous tornado kind of like coming their way. And he's like, it's too late. It's already here. And <laughs> the time is bad. The delivery is bad. But the fucking shot is really cool. The buildup is fantastic. I have to 100% agree. But let's just... Can we take this in context? So, everyone's enjoying their evening, watching a good movie... And they cannot fucking hear an F4 tornado roar its way into five feet behind the movie screen. Guys. It's right up on them. It's Yeah, it actively sneaks up on them. What the fuck? I mean, in, well, through this entire movie, every single tornado sounds like a lion roar. Yeah. It's because fucking. you underestimate the sneakiness. <laughs> Sneaky stick is Like every tornado is just John Turturro from Mr. Deeds. Yeah. But before this, um, you got Joe going up and ordering eight coffees to go. So they're not really planning on sticking around long anyway. Uh, but everybody needs their coffee. I feel that. That's my kind of people. In the process, Joe steals the, the pen from the, uh, the employees back there. Finally signs off on the last divorce paper. She's ready to be done with this fellow. Melissa can have him. Yeah, I, I don't understand that either. Like, I know I give this movie a bunch of passes and stuff like that, but just because Bill just told her what, you know, everybody was thinking, all of a sudden, fuck this guy. It's a real emotional, unnecessary bit. And like I said, the whole subplot here is unnecessary, and it bugs me through it <clears throat> throughout the film. Especially, yeah. like, it's just forced on you i don't care about that i want to see more of these fucking tornadoes tearing shit up and they do a fucking phenomenal job of giving you plenty of that it's just i don't need this will they won't they shit in the background you know what's will they just get to it yes because they clearly love one another and then suddenly she's like fuck it i guess i will sign the divorce papers even though he told me what i needed to hear yeah like that whole characterization that little moment made zero sense to me Okay, the subplot, I agree with you. It'd be fine if it just didn't happen. But that signing of the papers, that's the catalyst to say, all right, I've done it. It's your decision to make now. What of it? Yeah, what but it's not your decision to make. So, again, we're going to jump ahead because it's there's a lot of crazy shit going on. The tornado hits. They all run inside of this uh, warehouse-like area to stay safe. The tornado tears up everything and throws it just at them. No one else is being attacked. Every car, everything is going right at these people. And yay, they survive. No one gets hurt. Of course. The fucking Professor so, Tornado Man, he gets fucking swiped in the head by Hubcap. That's what he gets for trying to play hero and catching that hose. Damn. You gotta leave the hose alone. Nonsense. When we see this guy, it's because he's just like a random one of the, uh, the crew. He doesn't yeah. matter. He's not even like Cameron's status. Mm -hmm. He's just the guy that listens to classical music on the run. Oh, is that the classical music guy? All right. This happens. Then the wife 
to B comes out and she's like, oh my God, we survived, blah, 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 blah. Here's your ring. I don't want to be with you. Does it, is it bad that I don't feel bad? And Bill Paxton's like, I don't know. I guess not. And it's a moment to where like Bill knew this was going to happen eventually, but he seemed so fucking bewildered that it did happen. I'm like, you obviously have no emotional connection to her. She's just fucking rebound Reba. For sure. Yeah. Like, Melissa is stunned at everything. Tremendous destruction. She comes up and is just like, dude, I'm out. I can't compete. And to be <laughs> honest, she can't. Uh, it's true. It's almost like Bill's like, what? No, what? No, he's not. not. He's just he's like, like, all right, bye, Felicia. His ring off, and he's like, oh, no, that's a shame, baby. You know how to get home, right? Here's five <laughs> bucks. <laughs> oh. Yeah, like, as he's saying that, he's just, like, walking away. Get your yeah. fucking <laughs> Northwest Arkansas <laughs> accent out of here. Take it back to fucking Walmart. Dang, dude. She just He just looks at her and goes, thanks for trying. But we find out that the tornado that just passed by them is on its way to Wakita, which is the home of the glorious Aunt Meg. And all of her meat. <laughs> Yeah, and unfortunately, unlike the sign, it's not Wakita forever. It lasts through <laughs> Wakita. They they rush their way there, and Wakita is just fucking devastated. We pass by an emotional representation of Helen Hunt as a child with her family, you know, having dealt with that F five, and here she is with her aunt now, having suffered potentially a similar fate. Yeah, and we like, roll up on Meg's house, and it's still standing, but definitely like it's questionable. It is, and it's kind of funny that the only thing structurally sound in the town is the sculpture of the tornado. Yeah, and that's also like a big epiphany moment here later. They uh, hop up uh, in Meg's house, they go up through the second floor window, and you can hear the dog barking. He's like a distress call, and they all climb up, or at least Bill and uh, Joe do, and they go inside. Bill has the magic ability to just make a, a flashlight appear and gives it to Joe so she can go inside and find good old auntie. And where is she? She's down on the bottom first floor, maybe, and the dog's standing there, and they're like, we gotta get you out of here. You okay? And she's like, well, I'm just fine. And the house tries to come apart, and the TV almost hits them. Like, it's gonna be a big thing. You're like, oh man, the TV almost fell on them, but the cord kept it from getting them. And then a second later, it falls, but it's nowhere near them, so why were they concerned to begin with? In hindsight, they should have let the aliens take the TV. Yeah, because now the house is falling apart, and Philip Seymour Hoffman is really going for it in this bit. He runs up, jocks watch, pulls up his fucking pants as he's running up to the window. Meg! <laughs> and they're like yeah, carrying her out. He loves everything. Meg. Well, it, we all do. That's just, we all do. To be fair, that steak and eggs looked fucking delicious. Egg so I get it. Can steak and eggs. They get her out. And they go back, they get the dog, and everything's leaning. And, and all of a sudden, the house pulls, like, the ending of Poltergeist and starts collapsing in on itself. Yeah, it just totally collapses as soon as they get out. Uh, they get Meg uh, into an ambulance. She's got, yeah. like, a, I don't know, a gash on her head or something. She's all right. She's got a broken wrist. But, like, fucking stay with your aunt, man. Instead, she just, like, sends her to the hospital by herself. Just like, no, all no, right, no, no. we'll see you in a couple days. No, um... She gets she the blessing like, to go chase it. Yeah, yeah. She's like, hey, you know, this is what you do. Go do it. And then she's like, without any qualms, drops her hand and just runs <laughs> out of the ambulance. You're right. Fuck off. But they see that the only thing sitting there is still the twister art. And, you know, she's like, oh, I know how to make the balls fly. Blah, 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 blah. And then she's I like, get she all the aluminum cans you can. All the aluminum cans. All, all of pepsi. them. Bring me all the bacon and eggs you have. But anyway, agreed. next up is Dorothy 3. Door 3 is on its way to the next F4 tornado, along with the good old Bill and Joe. And this time, it's super equipped with all these sensors that have these nice little helicopter things on them. So that means once it opens up, they just kind of glide into the twister and take whatever they need. Yeah, they end up looking like fucking all the Budweiser airplanes that you see at the flea market. <laughs> Nice. What a great way to make this twister seem more trashy. Well, it is, it is like what it is. Trashy. So they're chasing the F4, and this one is smart. Like, <laughs> it's smart. It starts throwing fucking trees, not only at Dorothy, but at their truck. 
I mean, that one had just high defense. What are you going to do? Yeah, they actually parked the truck, set down Dorothy 3 in front of it. They they think this is the one, but it little, gets taken out by a tree. Yeah, little did they know there were 20 minutes left in the movie, so they couldn't quite get what they needed. <laughs> right. Yeah, it, it's just too light. Uh, Dorothy gets taken out. They need some kind of anchor. Again, all the little balls spill out all over the place. Mm. And then the tornado drops a fucking gas tanker in front of the truck. Yeah, at this point, the movie turns into just this wacky action movie or whatever. I'm fine with that. I mean, it's <laughs> impressive and it's a lot of fun, but realistically, you know, objectively, it's fucking stupid. <laughs> no matter how much I like it. <laughs> yeah, you know, because they're in a truck, like a regular civilian truck. This it's thing a has a gas tanker with a full tank. Lifting in the air, tossing it around in front of their truck, but not lifting the truck. This tanker hovered maybe like a football field down the road, tapped their truck only to be sucked away again, and thrown right back at them. And then it explodes, and they they drive right through the fire, because, uh, yeah, that's what they do, and then... Science. Cool guys don't look back. I mean, look, it had to have been a hell of a hot explosion, because right after that... Bill has this tan that doesn't go away the rest of the movie. <laughs> just looking like a fucking butterball turkey. I'm yeah, it looks like Bill Paxton in the middle of this was just like, guys, this is too stressful. I gotta go to Cancun. Something, because like the rest of the movie, he has like a sheen on his skin. You think he's just getting the vapors from Joe? Oh, uh, you know. Helen hunting that tank top? Mm, I get it. He's hunting something. Mm. Now... Think about this, gentlemen. You're with the woman who you know you love and who you know loves you. You are clearly sexually excited by one another. You are sexually excited. Now you have thrown in life-threatening tornadoes, massive fireball explosions, projectile uh, vegetation. Brady, are you saying you have a boner right now? No, I'm just saying that there's no fucking way that they could ever have satisfying sex. There's no way. I mean, Bill's just trying to get his NATO nut. <laughs> this is getting off the rails, guys. Um, <laughs> yeah. Coming back from this, they encounter Jonas. Joe tells them what happened. You've got to anchor the pack or else your, uh, your little contraption's not going to work. Jonas just says, thank you, I'll consider that. Yeah, he has 100% faith in his package is not light. No, no, no. He says, I'll consider that. Like... That's that's not any dickish kind of uh, kind of statement that says thank you. I'll He's just being professional. Being really smug and cynical about it. Like, like, even his driver just like, hey, they would never lead us the wrong way. They would never like, you know, shut up. Not- We're gonna win. Yeah. Well, what does his driver know? Like he gets fucking impaled in fifteen seconds. Okay, that was his fault. He just oh hum de hum. <laughs> Oops, sorry, Jonas. And then they get picked up and fucking Brock Lesnar's in there and, you know, F5's them out of that bitch and they explode. And that's that awful explosion that I was talking about. It's like, it just looks so fucking bad. Oh, it even has a, like, bomb drop sound. It's so bad. Yeah, his car just gets uh, picked up and tossed, uh, tossed to the side like a little bottle of sassafras. Like a little bitch. <laughs> And then other things are getting tossed out of the tornado, and we're treated to Helen Hunt giving us the uh, Konami code. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it sucks up all these tractors. It starts just, like, chucking them down in these, like, really evenly patterned ways on the road. Right! Uh, Left! Uh, <laughs> come the fuck on. It <laughs> seems so unnecessary. It gets so crazy, and you have, like, a moment of relief. It's like a really brief moment. And then a house just rolls up on the road. This is the yeah. fucking line. This is Bill Paxton's shining moment. It's game over, man. But in <laughs> twists. <laughs> I think we're going in! And then it's <laughs> through the door. Yeah, like, he has no other option. Like, he can't just, like, pound the brakes. Nope. This house that is literally rolling across the road... He's just got to drive the fuck through it. Thank God this house is made out of uh, fucking cardboard and yeah. zero damage to the truck. Well, if you notice, like, in those shots or whatever, it's more like, thank God he was driving a Dodge this entire time. Yeah, fair enough. If dodge, you can't dodge it, dodge it, ram it. Dang, dude. Sponsor us. 
Yeah, Dodge, sponsor us. <laughs> so they have uh, Forthy strapped down in the back of the truck, and they're flying through a cornfield, and they're like, you know, the only way we can do this is we open this motherfucker up, and they just let the truck go into it. Yeah, he sets it on cruise control. Yeah, the package can't be too light when you got two tons of American steel strapped to it. Dodge! I don't know how much Dorothy weighs, but I was giving her the benefit of the doubt. So yeah, they run this uh, fucking Dodge truck strapped with Dorothy into this tornado. This fucking mile-wide tornado, by the way. They say it's a mile wide at the base, which is fucking huge, by the way. Like, put that into your perspective. A mile-wide tornado, F5, that's just destroying everything in its path. That's yeah, they a have fucking huge tornado. The spot is Saturn huge. is now spinning on Earth. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a mega twister at this point. I mean, it's not even like a funnel or a cone, it just looks like a barrel. Yeah, so they drive this truck through the tornado, and then they're like, alright, we gotta run the fuck away, right? Yeah, and this is where a lot of things kind of fall apart for me. I mean, this the whole end of this movie, it's just the speed of the twister versus the speed of them running just makes no fucking sense. Because like nope. you get a sh- you get a shot of them like standing there like oh shit we gotta run, and then we look at the twister and it's tearing towards them, but we all know like people can only run like what ten miles an hour or something like that, and this yeah, thing's not- already out wide. Well, if and- you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a twister. Bro. Dodge ran that is. Helen Hunt cannot run. She looks like Liam Neeson in Taken. Oh, no. Is that like a Steven Seagal run? Yeah, she's like, eh, 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 just struggling. So there's no fucking... Because it shows horses. I was like, oh, they're going to hop on these horses, and that's going to try to give them, like, some leeway. Yeah, like, it's obvious the horses are, like, spooked. Why are the horses still there at fucking all? They take off fucking running, like you were saying, Eric, away from this giant fucking tornado there's no like they would have picked them up for sure because it's yeah. right over their shoulder yeah but then it goes from like right over the shoulder to like a football field away right over the shoulder forever away because like yeah. as soon as they get out of the cornfield they're right next to this fence that gets torn apart and turned into projectiles and it's in yeah. the distance again there's no fucking way they caught that much distance on it well maybe it maybe it cracked back you know maybe it turned into a sidewinder and that's got to be a <laughs> you know, comic bit because they run in and there's all these like sharp farming utensils and they're like oh my god who lives here no nope. yeah, they, they run out they, the back they run into a fucking uh a barn full of scythes and machetes it's like a fucking comical horror movie it's like uh what not wrong turn what's the one in australia it's like that one the upside down turn yes counterclockwise turn so counterclockwise Clockwork Orange is a Kubrick movie just like The Shining, which was in this movie. Boom! That's all six fucking levels of Kevin Bacon. Full fucking circle, man. I think I just shit myself. So that was Twister, everybody, from 1996. <laughs> but yeah, they fucking run the, you know, the Twister's right there. They finally get to this little shed. It's a, like a pipe shed, and all it has in it literally is a pipe and some yeah, leather. Yeah, it's for like uh, generators or something. I don't I don't really know what that is, but there's like, yeah, gas pipes or something. Yeah, it's for irrigation. Ah. This, Eric, is what got me, all right? I was able to deal with the movie. You know, the suspension of the disbelief is one thing and all that. You know, it's a movie. I'm just having a good time. Bill Paxton's just hamming it up. I don't mind. But this, the fucking end. I went, are you kidding me? So yeah. he takes a fucking leather strap, a piece of leather, the, the equivalent of grabbing your belt wraps it around him and Helen Hunt and a pipe as the angelic chorus soars to a fucking peak and the F5 tornado washes over them. Mm -hmm. And they're fine. Not a piece of debris touches them. Nothing. They just get sucked up into the air like little angels suspended by a leather belt. This moment is fucking cool. It's cool. I mean, it looks cool. It sounds awesome. But listen, man. This fucking tornado just rammed through a fucking sharp knife factory and has all this shit floating around in it, and they're completely unscathed. Dude, a blade of grass would be enough, and they're just like, nah, we're cool. A brilliant yeah, man it, once said, it's not that the wind is blowing, it's what the wind is blowing. Shannon! Shannon! <laughs> 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 
And yeah, yeah, I agree. Like, they would be absolute... Like, they would have no skin left. Yeah, they'd be eviscerated. Just immediately. Yeah, it's... You know, for a twi- or you know tornado awareness movie, this has got, like, the most bullshit thing ever. Like, you can't <laughs> just be in a tornado and it'd be okay. If it comes over you, you're getting hit by everything that's inside that tornado. You're gonna die. Every I just bit realized- of sand, every piece of grass, everything is hitting you at 400 plus miles per hour in an F5 tornado. It's gonna pass just, right through you. It's it's tornado awareness to the tune of werewolf, their wolf. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it look- is to tornado awareness what dare is to drug awareness just like scaring you away from everything without ever giving you actually any facts yeah like hey that's a tornado That'll it'll be fuck you up <laughs> said unless you're Bill Paxton then you're okay yeah but the tornado passes they <laughs> are totally fine the horses are inexplicably fine Everyone's fine. Everyone's fine. About only Except the last Joe. guy gets killed. And the, even the family that looks like Joe's family from the beginning, they're fine. Yeah, I got two dogs and a kid and dog Schnuffles, my pet skunk. <laughs> Schnuffles, no! <laughs> China, China. <laughs> oh, but yeah, with the, the gang shows up just in time to be like, oh, look, they're back together. And he gets his secret titty squeeze and, and a kiss. We're not even going to point out the fact how they had, had no clue where the fuck they were after the truck got sucked up into the tornado and they found where they were. Credits. Yep. I'm just like, stop thinking about it. It's over. <laughs> I guess that was an all right movie about tornadoes. What do you think, Ma? It's just like what happened to your paw. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> And then the credits roll on that, and it's like, shine on, and then Superman's watching it and crying. That's a beautiful documentary about my life. But we do see at the end, uh, you know, all the computers are lit up. They did get the data that they needed from uh, Dorothy Four. You know, we have some resolution here. Everything's going to be all right. They got all the little balls up in the suck zone. It's all good. Remember, everybody, take a drink every time you hear the term suck zone. I'm taking a drink literally any time I hear anything in this movie. That's why I'm drunk <laughs> right now. Like you've already passed out in this uh, podcast is just a dream. <laughs> so what did you guys actually think? What's your, your final thought on this? I think that we should be good to ourselves and each other. That's a Jerry Springer's reference. <laughs> well, I thing. thought it was like Bill and Joe's excellent adventure. Be excellent to each other. Bro. Yeah. So this movie's stupid, but I still like it a lot. I mean, the adventure's there, but that's about it. I can agree. Like, this is totally one of those films that if it's on in the background, you turn it on. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm not going to change the channel. Twister's on. But, it, you know, Bill Paxton gets all the credit for this movie and things like that. Again, I love me some Bill. He hams it up in here. It's a good time. But Helen Hunt is the real shining star of this film. Agreed. Well, she's the only one that took it, even though I feel like a movie like this isn't serious, but she's the one that took it serious enough to where her character shined. Shined on. Shined on. Oh, God. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot. It was a lot of fun. Science can be a bitch when you're talking about, like, real life. So just kind of disregard science a little bit when you're thinking about this movie. But overall, it was real fun. It was. And there you have it. That's Twister from 96. If you have any strong feelings about the movie or the podcast yourself, by all means, leave it in the comment section below. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that little bell icon. Hit that fucking bell icon. I'm telling you, hit it. Uh, If you want to know next time, we've got another one of these going. Get out there and follow us on all of our different social medias. Of course, we've got that Twitter, the Facebook. We got an Instagram. We got a wonderful administrator who's constantly pumping out new content for you guys. And just get out here and see what we're doing next time. Or we'll have to get some of that indestructible leather like Hollywood Hogan does to all of his opponents in the New World Order.